OK. Now, as you can see, we have a full classroom. It's actually more than full because we have chairs at the back. And I am hoping that uh, we're going to find a way to scare some people in from in this classroom so that we're going to have a regular crowd of 180 rather than 200. OK, so uh, next time it will be much better. And the sections, of course, are going to be much better. Now, uh, today uh, what I want to do is I want to give you some information about the course. Why is this course constructed or why was it constructed a few years ago? And uh, what is expected, what you should be expecting from this course and other things that will follow. I am distributing an information sheet for the course, the syllabus. Do you all have a copy of that? OK. OK. Before I go further, how many of you are repeating students? Repeating means that not necessarily failed, but you are taking the course again. OK. You have to stay after class and talk to me. OK? After class. After everything is finished, I want you to be here and talk to me, OK? It's important. OK. Now I think uh, I, will, I can start with uh, introducing myself and a number of things related to the course. Now, let me start with introducing the simple parts of the course. Now, another thing in this classroom is, of course, we have the problem of overcrowding. This place is going to get very warm if we turn on the heaters. So heaters are off, actually. But if it is a very cold day, I suspect that it will get a little bit cold at around 5 o'clock. OK, so we, we are going to manage that. So that's number one. So if I were you, I would be dressed like an onion. Do you know like, what is the meaning of dressing like an onion? You can take everything out and stay with the thinnest possible thing, of course. Or you can put everything up okay, if it is cold. Unfortunately, this is what we're going to have, especially it is going to be a little bit more problematic when we get closer to May, where you're going to be looking outside. And this place is going to get warmer. OK. So this is another thing that you have to keep in mind. Now, the name of the course is a process outlook for industrial engineering. Is this an introductory industrial engineering course? Yes. Does this course mention about the other courses in industrial engineering? Probably not. So I'm hoping that this course is going to be an enjoying course. But at the same time, what I'm expecting you to learn is how to approach industrial engineering type issues. Now, whether you are going to take a course in later years on heavy mathematical techniques of doing something, you will always have in your mind on how to utilize those when you have an engineering problem that you're going to again meet in the future. So this course, hopefully, is going to give you the first touch on how to look at the problems. So now I'm hoping to transform, to transform you from high school plus high school plus students, OK? And that's the reason why I'm going to talk with the students who are repeating the course, because they are not in that category anymore. So you are high school plus students over high school. And I am going, my aim is to create a group of you, hopefully all of you, who will be able to look at the problems that they see in everyday life and in more complicated organizations as industrial engineers. You will not know how to solve them. You will not know how to approach those problems. But you will have the way to observe. And you will be able, hopefully, to look at the problems and be motivated for the techniques that you are going to learn in your second, third, and fourth years. OK, so this is more or less the object. Of course, you're going to learn certain things in this course. But 
I am sort of undermining those. This is sort of the main thing that drives me to teach this course. Now, my name is Nesim Erkip. I met some of you in the orientation meeting, but not probably all of you. And uh, I am at, the, at this department since 2005. Before that, I was studying at high school. OK. And well, before, so do you think that I was at high school before that? Do I look that young? Thank you. Uh, I, I am a retired professor from Middle East Technical University. I retired in 2005 from Middle East Technical University after working for 27 years and came to Bilkent. So most of the Bilkent people are my friends because we were all together in 70s and 80s. Now, currently, I am working at the rector's office as well. So I have a position there. And so it means that you will have to take an appointment from me if you want to ask something. Because usually, you won't be able to find me physically. I may be downstairs, upstairs. Nobody knows where I am. This is the beauty of having an administrative position. OK? So this is more or less who I am. I will give you more information if you ask me tomorrow and on Friday on sections. And these are my addresses. OK. Now, this course has four sections. Now, what I am planning to do in this course is to test whether you are flexible enough to follow a certain course schedule. Now, you're going to see that we're going to have each of you is going to have different course schedules every week. So I will ask you sometimes to come at 8.30. Sometimes I will ask you to come at 9.30. Those are going to change, so on and so forth. So you have to follow every week. Why? Because what I am planning to do in this course is to use this medium as the main medium where I give information about, general information about certain things. And the sections are going to be the place where we're going to discuss those in some detail. So depending on, and I am a very busy person, so I'm not going to do all of them every week. So we're going to have a shifting schedule of a different type. And you have to follow that. But this is more or less the sections that you are assigned for. Now, these are the two sections where we're going to have camera capturing the whole audience and myself. And they are going to be available at an address that I'm going to mention two days after it is shot. So it means that you can follow my lectures from the web as well two days after it is shot. OK? And we're going to talk more about this detailed thing. Now, one important note. Now, on Wednesdays, we have your time slot is up to 6.30 uh, PM. OK, now this means that if from another, in another course, if somebody assigns an exam after 5.30, because they would usually do that, actually, they cannot do it if they do it in the computer anymore, because the computer is not going to let them. But if they schedule after 5.30, which is the regular ending time of courses, you have to warn them that you, they cannot do that because you have a course. OK, so you shouldn't be uh, uh, fixing any extracurricular activity to that time. Now, we are not going to utilize that time regularly because I am, on the average, I will be making only two hours of lecture on Wednesdays. But we may, we may need at certain times, and I will give you information on that. But never promise anybody else for that time slot. And be careful if somebody else asks that time for an exam, be careful to uh, uh, warn them that they cannot because you have a lecture there. Okay? This is a little bit un unusual for, for Bill Kent because we don't have a lot of courses after 5.30. Okay. Now, this is mainly the text that we are going to follow, of course. As you're going to see as the semester uh, rolls, we are only going to use six chapters out in, the, in this book. So I don't recommend you to buy it. And I will make it to you available in, in, in form of a PDF. I took uh, 
permission from its owner. So I can do that in an educational system. Usually you are not allowed to do that. So, but I have a permission to do that for this sp specific textbook. Okay? So we will be using different chapters of it, which are more mechanical parts of the, uh, of the, of the material. But we are going to have a lot of material, including a lot of YouTube uh, videos, short clips. We're going to have videos, regular long videos that are available in the library. We're going to have other texts that I will assign you to read, so on and so forth. But this is the main book. And I think you have the list in front of you. I didn't put it here, but you have that list in front of you. And hopefully, before every week starts, I will send an email or put it at the web saying that it is at the web, the readings that are associated with that week's material. OK? Next. Now, there are two main assistants in this course. They are extremely uh, experienced assistants for this course and for the department. Uh, Ece Demirci and Gizem Özbaygın, both of them are PhD students. They are very close to graduation. I think they have more or less one or two years for graduation, which means that they are going to become doctors and Yardımcı docent and assistant professors and so on and so forth in, in next. So it means that they are very experienced because usually you have assistants who are first year graduates. Okay, but they are here for this course and it's very important that, that you utilize them in the best possible way. Now, we are also going to have student assistants. Student assistants are students like you who are studying at the fourth year. We're going to have 14 of them for this course and I will tell you how you are going to make use of them in different uh, stages of your homeworks or term paper. Okay? So we have a lot of help, people helping, supporting this course. Okay. Now, there is a course web page, which is the main medium of communication between you and the course and myself. Uh, you're not allowed to come in. Excuse me. You have to ask, first of all. If you don't ask, you, can, you are not allowed to enter. OK. Now, this is my bad side. Now, I'm not that bad. You can see that. But I want you to make sure that you are here on time. And you have, if you are not going to be here on time, if you have a reason, you can simply write me an email saying that I will be late for this lecture. And I will immediately say, OK, because of this reason. And I will probably say yes. Okay? Now, if that is not the case, I will not allow you to enter the classroom after a reasonable time, of course. Now, this is more than reasonable because we have almost the first 20 minutes here. Okay? Now, uh, the course web page is at this address, and I will usually write you an email if I place something new to the website. Okay? So that will be the way to communicate. I will, of course, be using your official university email, and that's the only email that I will use. I will never use the others. Whichever email that you have given to the university as your main address, that will be the email address that I can use. I am not allowed to use any other one, and the chances of bouncing, the mail bouncing is very large if I use something else, because I'm sending 200 mails at the same time. You can imagine that it will create a problem. OK. This is the course description which is written in the catalog. OK. So we're going to talk about that later on in more details. But this is basically a three-credit course, like most of your other courses. The uh, ECTS credit units is six, like all the undergraduate courses. And you can see that we have words like familiarize and uh, notions and so on in the description, which actually follows my main objective of setting up this course for freshman students. Okay? And this is basically, you can see that we are hoping that at the end of this course, you have a good intuition on how IEs can operate and how should they observe things and how should they approach certain type of problems. Okay, but you can, of course, you, you can read this. 
Now, what are the course objectives? So let me spend some time on this, because I believe that this is, this is rather important. Now, hopefully, at the end of the semester, I will go over these objectives again in the last lecture. So we're going to see how much of these objectives are satisfied in this course. Now, the first one is we're going to introduce the notion of process with examples. Now, today I will start with giving dictionary definition of process after I finish the introduction. And then after that, we're going to give a number of examples that I took from uh, YouTube, and we're going to enjoy ourselves, and, and so on. OK. Now, then uh, we, I, want you to uh, I want this course to introduce the notion of performance evaluation with measures, objectives, criteria. This is something which is missing in these days in Turkey, because we have a very cloudy environment. We don't know what is being spoken. If you don't understand a certain type of language, you cannot understand what's going on. Okay? It's not for ordinary people. Okay? So everybody is speaking in codes. Now, if when we are solving a problem for industrial engineering, on the other hand, we want things to be very clear. We want to make sure that this is our objective. This is the way that we are going to measure our objective. This is what we are going to achieve at the end of this change, so on and so forth. So this is actually, those are the things that we're going to talk with some very simple examples in this course. We're going to introduce notion of process improvement. So you have something going on. Let's say the registration system, which failed yesterday, two, two days ago. Okay? Failed in the sense that if you are trying to reach the system from outside the university, you were, you were not able because there was this cyber attack. Okay? I, don't, I, I learned actually what it was. We had a meeting yesterday, but it's very lousy, of course. But how can we improve this whole process so that this kind of thing will affect you less? This is what we call process improvement. Okay? So we're going to see some examples and how we can do it. OK, actually, most of the things that industrial engineers do after they graduate is process improvement. Whether it is a manufacturing process, a service process, or whatever process are we talking about, they try to improve that. Now, in this course, actually, we're going to apply knowledge of high school mathematics on some problems. So you cannot claim that I don't understand the mathematics of this. No, it has nothing to do with calculus. Well, maybe some calculus, but you already are familiar with that in high school. We're going to talk about very simple type of problems. So there is nothing that you need to worry about in terms of technicality. But you have to understand what you are doing, of course, in the perfect way. Now, in the, another thing which is probably the key result of this type of an approach in this course is to build appreciation for mathematical representation of problems via examples. Now, what do we mean mathematical representation? I talked about the registration problem. And all the terms that I used were very loose. I said that it was inconvenient for you. It turned out to be inconvenient for you. You have to improve it. But what is the meaning of inconvenient? Okay, how are we going to measure inconveniency here? So in one way or another, what you need is you need a mathematical representation of the problem. This is actually what IEs do. After four years of education, hopefully you're going to transform this type of a problem into some symbols, mathematical terms, and be able to approach in a more analytic way that you understand. And of course, you have to retransform it back when you are talking it to the people who are going to apply it. Okay? So this is actually what we do. This is what I mean by mathematical representation. It doesn't necessarily involve solving a problem, but with symbols, we are able to think more. So hopefully, we're going to see a number of examples on how those symbols can be manipulated, how we can transform certain things to symbols, so on and so forth. Very simple, when you look at this, is, it is very simple. But I think this is, these are the things that we are going to aim in this course. Now, maintain interest for the topics courses to be followed in the curriculum. Again, in the last lecture, when I'm going over the objectives, I will go over your future curriculum, i.e. curriculum. And we're going to match those two things together. 
So you will be able to understand which courses are the courses that you are going to aim because you like that more, and, and so on and so forth. I think it's a very important wrap up. Now, another course objectives is maintain mutual respect and effective interaction between students, instructor, assistants, and student assistants. So these type of incidences, if there is any incidences that this is not cared, these are the things that I care a lot. And I will try to intervene those type of things. If it is in between myself and somebody in the classroom, I will try to solve it again personally. I'm hoping that I am mature enough to do that. Um, but this, this is something that you should keep in mind. These are your friends that you see here in this classroom are actually your cohorts. Most of them are your cohorts, meaning that you're going to graduate at the same time. And they will be your colleagues. They will be your network in the future. This is the main network. Then you have the Bilkent network. But that's something else. But these friends that you see here, so I think having mutual respect, being able to operate, work together in different projects, not necessarily with your best Kalten friend, OK? Uh, but they are the colleagues that you are closer to, uh, compared to anybody other industrial engineers. So keep that in mind when you are approaching your friends or when your friend approaches you, OK? So this is, this is important. OK. Conduct of the course. Now, this is something that I already mentioned. We're going to have lectures on Wednesdays. And every week, we are going to meet, except Yirmiyush Nisan. We're not allowed to meet that day. OK, I will be coming here. So if you are interested, of course, you can come as well. Now, lectures, there will be a number of lectures. And I expect more participation from you in those lectures. In some cases here, I will also try to create an environment where I will ask for your participation. So we, we have a few cases that I will do that. Now, the, the videotape that we are having today is at this site, okay, which can also be reached from the university main page. If you look at the right-hand side of the main page, uh, there is a, a virtual tour of the university. And underneath that, there is this video archive of the university where courses like this are kept there. There are probably a total of 40, 50 courses uh, that videos are kept for. Okay? Some of them are repetition, like this one. Okay? I have two others being kept there. Maybe we, we can clean the first one. I don't know. And, but there are a number of undergraduate and graduate courses that are open to public. OK, so these are courses which are open to public. OK, next, grading. How am I going to grade you? This is an imp important thing because this is the agreement that we have in the beginning of the year. Now, you're going to have six quizzes. And these quizzes are going to be unannounced short exams during lectures. I am going to have some quizzes here, believe it or not. OK, you can say, how can you have a quiz here? I will. And I had, actually, in the previous years. And sometimes I will be using a neighboring amphitheater if it is available and if I need that. There are sometimes there are certain questions that I ask which is not going to allow to look at your friend's paper. OK, it doesn't mean anything to do that. But usually, we're going to have a parallel room as well. So we're going to have six of them. Each of them is 2.5%. It will affect your passing grade as 2.5. And there will be three to four homeworks with 9%. And each homework has its own gimmick on how I am going to grade you, and so on and so forth. So this is something else that, and I will try to give that information every time I give the homework. At the top of the homework, there will be rules of grading and so on. Then we're going to have a term paper where I will have two pre preliminary requirements, two things that will go take you towards writing this term paper. And first one is 2%, second one is 2%, final report is 12%. Here is the, this is the main thing where the student assistants are going to help you. OK, I know that this is a rather problematic part. And I'm hoping to use uh, student assistance here. 
Actually, that's the reason why they are here in this course. There will be two exams, dates, oops, this is incorrect. March 5 is the correct date. This May 7 is not correct. Mm, how am I going to find the correct date? Uh, it's April. Okay. What happened? I think if you, it, it will be uh, April 16. Okay? Now I am going to, okay, April 16. I'm going to have the exam in the classroom during lecture time. Okay? So there will be no excuses with respect to I had another exam the same day and so on. I don't care. It will be in the lecture time. Okay. And I will announce the locations in, in two weeks' time. Final exam is there. There will be some other assignments where I will give some simple questions to you. And it's not going to be graded and we are not going to, hoping for receiving them, we are not going to collect them. Okay. Any questions on this? This is the part where zincirleriniz boşaldı. Okay. So you were uptight and then you relax. Any questions on this? Now, this is the rule for grade FZ. Okay, you can read that, and if you have any questions, you can ask me later. Okay. Now, I, in, the, in what I have distributed to you, there are a number of policies. Okay? And these are very important because if these are my agreement with you, I'm not going to do anything against these policies, but I'm making it clear that you understand it as well. So I'm going to respond everything according to what I have written there. So there is something related to the term papers, something related to homework submission, which is basically the time. The due date is fixed. Okay, there is no notion of late submission. Okay, absolutely. And academic dishonesty is something that is very important. I think you had a session in GE 100, if I am not mistaken. Some of you, a year ago, some of you, uh, very, uh, one semester ago. And uh, this academic dishonesty is something which is very important. And I will usually follow what I have written there. So uh, please read that. Makeup policy. So if who is eligible for makeup? How are the makeups given? Now, please read that. I'm not going to allow anybody to say that I didn't know, because this is your responsibility to read. OK? And the solutions to exam quizzes, homework, et cetera, and claims for great change. OK? Uh, this is also written there, how you are going to do that. It's very organized. You can see that I'm very organized with respect to this type of things, and I want to simply give my terms in the beginning so that we all agree upon. And there is also a privacy policy. Privacy policy is simply, I am not going to give your grades or anything related to you, to any of your friends, or on the phone to anybody that I don't know, including yourself, of course. Okay? So if you are asking great, you have to personally come and ask me, unless it is posted somewhere, of course. And you are not allowed to learn your friend's great, your amjoldu's great, and so on and so forth. Okay? And don't, don't ask your whoever called me on the phone and ask for grades or some information. Okay? Privacy, everything that, is, that shows your, my assessment on your work is in between you personally and myself. Okay. Questions? Now, please read those, and if you have any questions, you can ask me during the sessions that we're going to have tomorrow. Questions? OK. Oh, it's finished. OK. Now, we have some more, of course. Now, if you look at the next page in, your, in, the, in what I have distributed, uh, there are some slides there. OK? Now, the previous ones were slides that I extracted from the information. 
Now, whenever I distribute slides, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can sit down and do nothing. Now, the purpose of distributing slides is to allow you taking notes in those slides. Because most of those slides will be abstract. I will not be explaining everything in very detail. Now, usually, I will distribute the slides three at a time, three on a given page, so that you have space to write the comments or the things that I am saying here on the side of those slides. Now, in this case, we don't have that because this is an introductory course, the introductory part of the course, and I only have dictionary definitions of process. But that's the purpose when I am distributing you. You're going to have a copy of the same thing in the web available. Okay? Actually, it should be at the web at this point as well. Okay. Any questions up to this point? Any questions on yes, uh, everything that we said? Go ahead. Uh, well, they are less than drafts, of course. The first one is the proposal of a certain topic with description of that topic. It's, it might be, it's not a draft of anything. The second one is more like an extended summary. Okay? So the third, th there will be no drafts because you're going to have student assistants working with you on those. Okay, any other questions? OK, now I think we can go and start talking about the uh, OK. It took several, several years for me to learn how to put it in this format. So I'm a little bit slow in, in technology, but once I learn, I never forget. OK. Now. What's the meaning of the word process? Now, this is the word that is in the title of our course. And I, was, I myself was always curious about the things that came in the first place. I mean, the meaning of a certain word, which is used in a rather informal way. And I am usually inclined to learn the meaning of those words. Now, as English is not our primary language, it's our secondary language for most of us. Some of us may have English as their uh, uh, mother tongue. But uh, we have to understand the meaning of those words in a more sensible way. That's the reason why it's always useful to look at the dictionary meaning of certain words if you are going to use it over and over again. OK. So what I did is I took the word process and I only consider the noun form of the word. Okay, there is also the verb form. And I eliminated certain definitions which were too specific in a, for a given context. I tried to take the ones that are more general. And I found many alternatives from the web, actually. But I usually try to go to more academic sources. Even if it's from the web, I wanted to make sure that they are reliable. So the sources that I looked at is the, the Dictionary of Random House. That's reference one. Reference two is the Collins English Dictionary, which is one of the most famous ones. The third one is the American Heritage Dictionary. Okay, You can see that these are good quality references. Okay, when you are writing term paper, I will ask you to have good quality references rather than an arbitrary reference from the website, from an arbitrary website. Okay, the fourth one is Webster. The fifth one is Macmillan. They are all very well-known publishers. And so what I did is I wrote certain parts of the definitions that are there. Uh, in my, for, for my own use, of course, and uh, come up with the definition of process. So let's start with the first one. Actually, we're going to be bored after I read the first three, four, five, because they will be very similar. Now, what is process? Process is a systematic series of actions directed to some end. 
and means that you have uh, an expectation. You have an expectation with respect to what you are doing. There is a purpose. Okay, another word for this end is purpose. You have a certain purpose of doing this whole thing. So a systematic series of actions directed to some purpose is actually a, a, a process. Now, for example, they gave uh, the example of to devise a process for homogenizing milk. Okay? So this is important. Of course, we know that homogenizing milk is important. So let's say that you are, uh, well, I think Pasteur is the person who, past who, who learned about pasteurizing it. So homogenization of milk is only possible after that date. It's important, and you devise a certain uh, series of actions. Um, uh, anyway, OK. So a second definition in the same reference is a continuous action. So you are not having a series of action, but it's a continuous action, like moving your hands like this continuously. Okay. Operations or series of changes taking place in a definite manner. Okay. For example, pouring wine to a glass Okay, is one example. So you have to move carefully, but if you are doing it yourself, it's sort of automatic. But what if you are teaching a robot to do that? Now, wine is specifically selected because if you drop it, you are not going to be able to clear up the stain. I hear this nice no sound coming to my ear. Okay, turn it off, please. Okay, so this is another definition. The action of going forward and, well, let's forget about those. Anything that you want to ask, you can raise your hand and ask. Okay? Anything that you don't follow, you don't understand. I have a tendency of simplifying things when I am describing. Okay? So everything is crystal clear usually. But doesn't necessarily mean that it is easy. I'm very modest, you can see that. Any reactions to that? OK. You have to get used to it, because I usually say certain things out of context. And well, if you don't follow it, it means that you're not listening. Or you don't understand. It's, both of them is, has the same meaning for me, actually. OK. Now, it's reference to a series of actions that produce a change or development. Now, in the digestion process, you change, actually. You transform the food in a different way. Now, the years that you're going to spend at the university is also a process, am I right? Now, take your pictures today, OK? Take your pictures in three years' time. You're going to have white hair coming out and so on. <laughs> no, it's not only that, but you, you, you will be different, actually. The way that you're going to look at things will be different. OK, and the, the way that you're going to uh, get surprised will be different a little bit, because you're going to, this, this, is, this is three important or four important years. Now, uh, this is important. So as a result of the process, you actually transform certain things. A method of doing or producing something. Now we're coming probably more to engineering. Now. What does engineer do? What, what does an engineer do? Engineering. That's a very good answer. But in detail, they are going to produce a product or a service. Let's consider an electrical engineer doing a certain plan for the electrical configuration of a building. We did, if we didn't have uh, electronic and electrical engineers, we wouldn't have AVMS. OK, AVMS require a lot of comp very complex electric circuits. Like the lights everywhere and shows upstairs, downstairs, auto parks, and so on and so forth. Now, basically, that's a product. Now, how, does, how can you come up with a plan like that or with, uh, with a product like that? Well, there are a number of rules that you need to follow. What is the meaning of those rules? 
whenever you have a certain rule, you take an action, prepare it accordingly. Then you come to the next rule and you take another set of actions and continue. Because there might be some limitations, requirements, and then you have the money, of course, problem. You cannot design the electric circuits in the way that you want because it might cost you a lot. So you might need to have alternatives so that you will select one of them as your option. So this is actually a product. It's a service, a project. Okay? And you require a number of actions in order to be able to produce that. Similarly, civil engineer does the same thing. Building, you, you, you say that like, I mean, they, they built buildings. They, they never built buildings. Buildings are built by uh, construction people. They are not necessarily engineers, okay? But who prepares the plan for that construction is a, a civil engineer. So there are a number of things that are taken into account. It's a very long process. And basically, this is what we do. Now, industrial engineers are also going to create products by taking a series of actions. So we're going to follow some processes, and we're going to have some products. What are our products? Well, our products are a little bit different in the sense that we, our products are usually the way to do certain things that are our products. So a procedure, for example, that students will follow in order to do the registration okay, is a typical example of what an industrial engineer can do. Or let's be a little bit more complicated. Let's go to a manufacturing plant where we manufacture automobiles. There are different types of automobiles. Which one is going to be manufactured before that and how many of them and so on requires very large scale plants. So what we do is, as industrial engineers, we create those plants. We, we come up with those plants, we change those plants, we transform. But basically what we do is we have a very limited data in the beginning where we forecast the demand, and then we have our own resources. We make best use of those resources to come up with the plan that satisfies the demand and that minimizes our costs, and so on and so forth. So this is a little bit more complex to describe compared to the electric circuit project of a building. Okay? But these are our products. So what we do is we take a series of actions to come up with those products. We're going to talk about these more and more, actually. This is, this is the purpose of this course. OK. A method of doing or producing something. OK, we can again forget about those. Now, let's look at the next one. And this will be the last one that I, I want to talk about. Reference 3. OK. Any questions on reference 2 or anything that I said? OK, so reference 3. Reference tree is a series of actions, changes, or functions bringing about a result. The process of digestion, the process of obtaining a driver's license. Okay? Now, the law, there is a certain law which limits the, the population who can take the driver's license. Okay? And Given that limitation and given other legal restrictions, there's a certain procedure. Now, that procedure is, you can say that, well, any, any procedure will work. Of course, any procedure will work. But think about how many people are asking for a driver's license. Think about the resources that you spend just to take the driver's license as, as a person. And think about the other side who is issuing you the driver's license and who has the authority of controlling whether you are eligible or not, this is a huge operation. So anything that you do to improve the process of taking it is, is extremely important. Okay? It looks very simple, but it turns out that it is extremely important. Similarly, health system. We are devising some changes. The whole world is doing that, actually. Like, who is going to be eligible to do, and so on. But how are we going to make it operational? How are we going to make sure that the plan that we select is the best? Are the areas where industrial engineers are extremely instrumental. 
Again, what is the important thing there? We have a process, a huge process, where we are, have to take some actions. And at each step, at each action, we have to think about how we should do, take that action. Okay? So the key role that we are going to have with our education is to make sure that we take those actions, each action, in an educated way. Because that's the purpose of being an industrial engineer. Okay, questions? Let's take a break for 10 minutes.